everyone, and welcome to another episode of Accessibility. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility, and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games, and more people to see themselves in the games they play? Back when it released in 2013 on the Wii U, Super Mario 3D World was one of my favourite Mario games that had ever been made. The way that it blended the old and new by taking the old level structure style of 2D Mario games but portraying it in 3D was just my kind of jam, I really dug it. It's, it's a really cool little game. Now, today in 2020, much like every other Wii U exclusive that has ever existed, Super Mario 3D World has been ported to Switch, and it's not a lazy port. It comes with this whole little side adventure called Bowser's Fury, which is basically the same kind of thing, but in a more open world design. It's got a big evil version of Bowser, and Mario can turn into a Super Saiyan cat, and Bowser Jr. is helping you. It's a nice little port, and in many ways it doesn't feel rushed or thoughtless, but there's a few things that have kind of been overlooked. In the seven years since this game originally released on the Wii U, I've become a lot more aware of accessibility in games, and a lot more critical of games that don't go far enough or that do things wrong in terms of accessibility. With that in mind, I wanted to have a look at the Switch version of this game and try and assess what it's doing right and what it's doing wrong in terms of being an accessible game. So today, on Accessibility, we're going to talk about Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. We're going to talk about some of the things that the game gets right in terms of accessibility, some of the places where it falls short, and some overall trends that Nintendo seems to be doing with their first party lineup in terms of accessibility that are perpetuated here and we would really like to see improved going forward. Let's start off with Super Mario 3D Land itself. As this game is a port from the Wii U, a console that shipped with a second screen tablet, a few design changes have had to take place to get certain parts of the game to work when played in docked mode. In the Wii U original, certain parts of certain stages would feature elements the player would need to interact with by tapping on their touchscreen. In handheld mode on the Switch, these these stage elements are still controlled using touchscreen taps, but when docked, players will need to use motion controls alongside analog stick and button inputs. If you're a player who finds pointer-based motion controls a barrier to play, there are parts of some levels you may not be able to interact with. While many of these are optional side paths, there's still content that you won't be able to engage with. With regards to the game's actual settings menu, Super Mario 3D World might as well not have one. You can select your controller of choice, invert the horizontal camera, or invert the vertical camera. That's the entire settings menu. There's no way to automate or turn off touchscreen or motion segments, no volume sliders, no control customization. The game's default settings cannot be changed in-game. Moving over to Bowser's Fury, this new side adventure actually features one accessibility feature not found in the main game. In this adventure, the player is joined by Bowser Jr., who can either be controlled by a second player or left to help you as an NPC companion. When you first meet Bowser Jr. in-game, players are given three choices on how much help he should offer the player, which can be changed later in the settings menu. If you ask for no help, Bowser Jr. will travel with you on your adventure, but offer no unrequested support. A little help will see Bowser Jr. occasionally grab coins automatically, or defeat certain enemies. And a lot of help will considerably ramp up that support. It's an interesting way to tailor the difficulty of the experience, and is set up in a way that makes sense in the story. That said, even on a lot of help, Bowser Jr. will still sometimes leave certain tasks difficult for disabled players to complete. Around several stages in the game, players can find paint marks on walls where, using your pointer or tapping on the touchscreen, while simultaneously being in the middle of a complex jump or climb, will cause Bowser Jr. to interact with that paint mark and pop out a reward for Mario. These are usually optional and not required for progression, but the number of simultaneous inputs required to redeem them can be a barrier for players who struggle with touch, motion, or multitasking inputs. It seems odd that Bowser Jr. cannot automatically complete these on the A Lot of Help setting. While the accessibility settings that are present and that are lacking in terms of Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury may not seem too notable by themselves, when you look at them in the wider picture of what Nintendo's been doing with their first party launch lineup for the last few years, it feels a little troubling. Enforced motion controls, enforced touch controls, a lack of settings in settings menus, and assumptions about default player 
ability have all sort of permeated a lot of Nintendo's games over the last few years, particularly since the Switch launched. And I think it's important we look at some of Nintendo's releases over the last few years to see how these issues in this game have existed for a while and are things we need to get on top of and tell Nintendo we'd like to see done better. First up, let's talk about enforced motion controls in games where they don't feel necessary. Whenever we talk about Nintendo enforcing motion controls on this show, I always end up discussing Pokemon, Let's Go Pikachu, and Eevee. While both games support traditional stick and button controls in handheld mode for catching creatures, when playing docked, players are forced to use motion controls instead. There is no settings option to instead use handheld mode button and stick inputs, a frankly baffling choice that left the game unplayable on the TV for many disabled gamers. And while there are some Nintendo games where enforced motion controls might make more sense, such as Super Mario Party, where goofy motion control minigames are most of the game's gimmick, they make a lot less sense in titles like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, where Super Mario Galaxy players have to use gyro aiming to navigate the game's main menu, rather than allowing the use of standard sticks and buttons to navigate. Considering the game is now playable on a handheld, you would hope that Nintendo would have gone to the effort of ensuring the game was playable, without motion, opening it up more to disabled players. And then there's the lack of decent settings options. The key Nintendo example of this from 2020 is definitely Animal Crossing, a game that has absolutely no traditional settings menu, and in many ways fails to cater for the needs of disabled players. Issues such as being unable to turn on visual cues for insect noises, for example, made parts of the game unplayable for deaf or hard of hearing players, and even the lack of volume mixer prevented many players with partial hearing loss or sensory processing issues from hunting insects based on noise in a way that they probably could have if they could have just turned everything but the insects down a bit. Here's the thing. When it comes to game developers, Nintendo is in many ways world class. They consistently release polished, fun, creative games that are in many ways the envy of the rest of the game industry. But for a company so invested in making games for everyone, they're doing a really poor job at considering even basic accessibility support. You might look at Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury in isolation and think, this doesn't look too bad in terms of accessibility as a one-off pair of games, but when you look at some of the issues these games have, lacking settings menus, enforced motion control, enforced touch control, you look at a lot of these issues and the fact that they keep recurring in Nintendo games, and it's not hard to see why they are consistently falling behind the curve compared to the rest of the industry. These are very basic issues that most other developers would find alternative ways for you to get around, or would offer you more settings choices, and it's really disappointing to see Nintendo make the same mistakes again and again. Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury are honestly about as accessible as any other Nintendo games right now, in that they force in motion and touch where they're not necessarily needed, and really lack in terms of their settings options. It's not that they're the least accessible games in the world, but I consistently expect better from a company like Nintendo. 